Hello beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be wrapping up my Scream series. I will be ranking every movie in the Scream franchise now that we have set with the new Scream 6 for a while, we can get this ranking done. Now, let's get right into it. Coming in at number six for me is Scream 4. I know that I am in the minority here and it's a very unpopular opinion, but I did not enjoy Scream 4 in the slightest. Even on rewatch, there just wasn't anything that I really took away from this film that I just loved. Um, objectively, it is a solid slasher, but for me, oh man, some of the most unlikable characters in the entire Scream franchise for me, the story and everything, the characters, it gets very dull, it gets very tedious. Jill is the most boring character okay she gets rivaled by some characters in Scream 6 but Jill for me is one of the most boring characters in the Scream universe up until she is revealed as Ghostface that's when you know she kind of comes alive and that was very enjoyable but until that moment she was just kind of a bargain brand Sydney um I really didn't care for her character everyone um you know fan favorite from 4 is Kirby I really didn't get anything from her that was a standout there is no moment with her outside of her ghost face call that was a real standout iconic moment for me I honestly can barely even remember any of her dialogue I mean nothing about her or any of the characters in general really stand out it was very odd narrative for me how we have these new characters in the forefront just for them to all die with our main characters being the backdrop but then coming in at the end um it was very odd to me because it seemed like they were setting up these new characters but they all just died so yeah what was that about <laughs> with scream 4 we have the introduction of teenagers it is the only time outside of screen that we get teenagers and jill and her friends just do not compare to sydney and her friends actually that first friend of jill's that get killed i can't even remember the girl like i can't remember nothing she said i can't remember nothing she did uh, everyone was just very blah now the two guys charlie and and his friend who are the film buffs they were decent they were enjoyable but nothing to write home about nothing really stood out for me um the kills were decent the kills were good ghost face calls and you know that whole ghost face attitude on those phone calls that was good in scream 4 but overall they really did nothing with the Gail character. I feel like she is kind of stuck in a rut. Gail was her best in one and two. She was enjoyable in three, but as far as her character progression, her growth is stunted. Like they have not done or gone anywhere with the Gail character. I really did not enjoy Jill's ghost face speech. Um, her voice, like everything about her irked me. I do not buy Jill as ghost face. Like I don't buy it. And her and Charlie were pretty tiny and I just didn't buy it. I didn't buy it at all. Um, I honestly feel like Scream 4 is just one of those situations situations where it's just not for you and it just wasn't for me coming in at number five is scream six now this was actually pretty solid very enjoyable even though it had some tedious moments i really didn't care for the bickering with tara and sam at the beginning of the movie the third act was literally a mess it was that is one thing that i look forward to in the scream universe is those third act ghost face reveals we even had a you know pretty good reveal in four but man I'm talking about they jumped off the bridge with this it was god awful I, thoroughly I felt like these had to be the most incompetent ghost face killers because baby it was three of y'all <laughs> and this was the best y'all could do um the New York backdrop it was it was a good location and I feel like they utilized it well I did enjoy some of the characters here but I'm not the biggest fan of Sam and Tara I'm not the biggest fan of the core four but overall it was a solid slasher with Scream 6 the whole situation where the movie started off where they reveal ghost face and the situation where they tell us Gail finds this little club where these people are obsessed with the stab movies if we would have went with that that for me would have been way more exciting than 
we're out to get revenge for our family member that you killed, who was Ghostface, which we already did in Scream 2 with, Mitch, with Mrs. Loomis, and we did in a much better way. Uh, the detective and his daughter, that was easy to see. Um, and then the reveal, I don't know what it was with this detective, but the acting was terrible. It felt really out of place. And the roommates, Quinn and Ethan, very blah. Like they weren't giving me anything just throughout the runtime of the movie. But we do get some really standout scenes. The corner store, the subway, Gail scene in her penthouse. So there are some shining moments in this one. It just for me, a lot of times, they felt like they dropped the ball. I really could care less about the romance and the love connections that they set up. I really could care less about Tara and Sam and their little sister tips and arguments. It just kind of went off the rails for me there. I did enjoy Kirby a lot more this time. I, I really didn't enjoy her in his Scream 4, honestly, but I liked how they utilized her character here and I enjoyed her. I did not like all of the Scream 2 rehashments that we did. Now, I typically enjoy the Scream callbacks that they do with previous films, but Scream 6 is the the one time that I did not enjoy it at all. The Gail slap, the third act being at a theater, being at college, the TV um, kill, which was a callback to Stu. I, I didn't enjoy any of those rehashments. It just all felt like at this point in the franchise, it's time to breathe new life into this. Let Ghostface win. You know, give us something different. Let's not go back and rehash. Let's not, let's, can I talk? Let's not do the same Scream formula. Yes, it's a Scream movie, but six movies in, we got to do something different. We have to kind of go against the grain. I would have enjoyed this a lot more if we let Ghostface win. But a more worthy Ghostface because them Ghostfaces... No. <laughs> Coming in at number four is Scream 5. Now, after Scream 4, I wasn't looking forward to this, but it really surprised me how much I thoroughly enjoyed Scream 5. I felt like it was a return to form for me. I felt like there was a good mixture of humor and tension. It was definitely an above average slasher. I thoroughly enjoyed and loved the motive for Scream 5. I love the commentary on toxic fandom. And with Scream 5, that's when I started to feel like I would be happy if this franchise moved more towards social commentary and moved away from horror movie commentary. Now, while I'm not the biggest fan of Sarah and, Tam and Sam, I do love the setup of Sam. I do enjoy what they did with her character as far as having Billy Loomis be her father and having this darkness to her character. So she isn't a typical final girl and I really enjoy that. Of course, it is going to be hard to follow up Sydney Prescott, but I do feel like they created a really good follow up with Sam. Tara, on the other hand, is very boring. Like she is very forgettable for me personally, but overall, I definitely feel like this was an above average slasher that I really enjoyed. In Scream 5, this is also the most serious Serious that they take the Dewey character, even though he was a fan favorite character for me, it always irked me how he was seemingly just kind of a joke. And in Scream 5, he's way more like rugged. He is more complex. He still can't shoot. <laughs> But I wish they would progress the Gale character in the way that they did with the Dewey character in Scream 5. I love the setup there. And even with the situation of him and Gale no longer being together, I don't like how we find him where he's no longer a cop and he's just sitting in this crazy, you know, home. However, the actual character, what they do with him, where we find him, where he goes, how he has evolved. This is the most respect they have paid Dewey. Coming in at number three is the one movie in the franchise that gets the most slack and I don't understand why it's Scream 3. I feel like Scream 3 does not get the respect it deserves. Put some respect on Scream 3 names. Look, we get the best red herring 
in the Scream universe with Detective King K. We get some fun characters. These B-movie characters are meant to be like crappy bargain brand spin-off characters when it comes to our being replicas of our main characters. They are supposed to be bad characters, but I actually really enjoy that. I enjoy the Hollywood bad job. I enjoy them going back and revealing something we thought we knew. I enjoy them digging up things from Maureen's past. I feel like this was a really good formula and I loved our third act Ghostface reveal. I love Sydney versus her brother. <laughs> Even though his motive, it may not have, you know, it was just you were the child she kept. I was the child she gave away. I want what you have. I liked it here though more than I did in Scream 4. It felt very rehashed. So Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. Scream 3 is the pinnacle of the Sydney character where we see her in Scream 3 where she is helping other women. She's on this hotline. She is her most bad ass. She's still vulnerable, but she's tough. She she is kicking ass and taking names. She ain't taking no ish. Sydney progresses to a point where after Scream 3, it's kind of stalemate for me. Her character does not continue to evolve in the way that we see her in Scream 3. I also feel like the dynamic of Bargain Brand Gale and regular Gale was very entertaining. I and really enjoy the opening sequence here in Scream 3 and I like all of the, you know, little trinkets that they add for Ghostface here. We are progressing what Ghostface can do at the point of Scream 3. He now can't just distort his voice. He can can actually mimic anybody's voice and even though it was a little convenient I also enjoy how they added where he has the bulletproof vest and he is our only long ranger ghost face he is smart enough to orchestrate all of this by himself he, he is, is smart, smart enough to execute all of this on his own so I love that progression that we get when it comes to Sydney and when it comes to ghost face and I love how it effectively comes to a head when we have our final showdown with Sydney and Ghostface, that dialogue there, that fight. Now, so coming in at number two is Scream 2. We are at college. Sydney is trying to move on with her life. And of course, she gets stalked by Ghostface yet again. Mickey! Child, let me tell you, I love Mickey throughout the film, even though seemingly he does seem to disappear. But then when he pops up as Ghostface, y'all. I feel like Mickey was so brilliant in his motive, in his defense. He's going to blame it on the movies. <laughs> Love that. And the brilliance that is Debbie Salt. Billy Loomis's mom, Mrs. Loomis. I loved her. I love her rage when she goes after Sydney, when she, you know, goes after Gail because that is her going after Gail and, you know, seemingly killing Dewey. Scream 2 came in and pretty much gave us everything that Scream did, but they just kind of upped up the ante. Very enjoyable ensemble cast. I like everyone all around. Enjoyed the opening sequence. Now, there can only be one movie that reigns supreme and that is Scream. Scream is so iconic. When I tell y'all Scream is the greatest cast of teenage characters ever in the movie ever. I don't care. Argue with your mama. It is what it is. <laughs> Even though Billy and Stu were like you saw that they were ghost face from far far away. I thoroughly enjoyed them throughout the movie. Really Matthew Lillard's performance was just so brilliant. Sydney the second greatest final girl of all time. Tatum the triple double OG. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Randy, fan favorite. There are so many iconic lines from Scream that I have literally just been walking around saying since I was like 10 years old. This is such 
an introduction to this scream world. You really get engrossed in it. And it is a very simple and typical slasher narrative. However, it was very unconventional the way they told their story, the way they did it in this meta way, the way they talked about horror tropes and went after that. We very get some amazing moments of tension. We get a really amazing mixture of suspense and humor, which me personally, I typically don't like humor anywhere in my slashes or in my horror, but it was done so brilliantly here. Thank you so much for watching this video, for supporting the channel. Let me know your screen ranking in the comments down below. I'm pretty sure you have screen four higher and screen three lower because that seems to be the overall consensus. But of course, this is all just my opinion and has, this is my experience with the Scream universe. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.